let's grab a drink, right? Sound familiar? Maybe that's the way you recently asked someone out on a date. Maybe it's the way your partner initially asked you out. Or perhaps it was the setting for a drink state gone sour due to too many whiskey sours. When I was single, I found that drinking on dates was the norm. And it still is. 86% of people drink on first dates, according to alcohol.org. And no judgment here. As you can imagine, drinking means different things to different people. Many use alcohol as a way to unwind and relax. And on one hand, people want to recreate the same feeling when they're on a date with someone. People use alcohol not only to unwind and relax on dates, but also celebrate with a potential partner. On the other hand, not everyone drinks on dates or in general. Some people don't drink due to religious reasons, health and wellness, personal values, or maybe they just don't like the taste of alcohol to begin with. Others have had bad experiences and life-altering incidences due to drinking. Tens of millions of Americans are also in recovery from alcohol abuse. So in 2016, I was a wine, beer, and spirits journalist. So giving up alcohol for a day, a week, or a month was terrible for my paycheck. And lo and behold, on New Year's Eve 2016, that actually happened. I decided to give up alcohol for a month. I was texting with a friend, and we made a dry January bet. And I wondered to myself, especially given my job and living in New York City, would this affect my life at all? And would it affect the way that I date? Well, spoiler alert, it changed everything. So as I was going along with this dry challenge, I considered maybe drinking and dating wasn't the way to do it, right? I considered that perhaps without drinking on dates, it would ensure more genuine connections, it would help me with the ability to realize red flags earlier on, and it would also ensure safer dating. So let's talk about genuine connections. When I was going on these dry dates, instead of sitting with somebody interview style and asking them, where are you from and what do you do for work? Dates were more interactive. We were going to workout classes and making ice cream sundaes. And as silly as this sounds, the point is that you can curate these ideas to things that you actually enjoy doing in your spare time when you're not looking for your soulmate. So some out of the box ideas might be going to museums or going to a play. You can really have fun with it. Second, um, there's the issue of red flags, which I'm sure we've all experienced. So for me, I realized that if I wasn't drinking on a date, what else would I have in common with this person? And certainly, if they questioned my reason for doing a dry month or they poked fun, then perhaps they weren't going to support me in other endeavors or long-term goals. Um, that's not to mention you know, self-centered conversations or other red flags that I might have just breezed past had I had a drink in hand. And third, safety. So nobody wants to say anything embarrassing on dates, certainly when we're drinking or we're not. But what I realized was I gained so much more confidence and energy when I was not drinking. I was getting home safely. I was not um, experiencing the spins or nausea or waking up with a hangover. And certainly, I didn't have any anxiety. <laughs> On top of that, the CDC suggests that you should eliminate alcohol or you should lessen it if you are sexually active so that nothing you know, bad happens, decreasing the likelihood of contracting an STD. So that one's self-explanatory. I'll let you guys <laughs> off with that. Um, the CDC also says that the average potential life lost between the years 2015 and 2019 was 3.5 million, and that was due to excessive drinking. Okay, so beyond all of these statistics, let's talk about something more exciting. You get asked out on a date, or you find someone who you want to ask out, but you're not drinking, right? So how does that happen? What do you do? One, if you're on dating apps, you can put in your profile or via message, you can tell them that you're not dating. And you can tinker with your settings to find people who also aren't drinking. Number two, 
is you could essentially tell them in person when you meet them, if you feel comfortable, and depending on your lifestyle, tell them you're not drinking right now or this is a long-term thing. In addition to that, you can create opportunities to enjoy yourself as you would if you weren't on a date. Like I mentioned before, you can create activities to bond over that don't involve imbibing. And the third, it would be silly of me not to mention that bars and restaurants now are increasingly having non-alcoholic options such as wine, beer, spirits, and cocktails that you can enjoy. So with all of that, you can see that socializing and drinking are changing. So is not drinking on dates as well. And so what I am proposing is taking a figurative shot at dry dating. Research and studies and my personal experience show that drinking is not great for your mental health or your physical health, and certainly I don't think it's the gold standard of dating either. So next time you're asking someone out on a date, instead of saying, hey, let's grab a drink, instead suggest, hey, let's do that activity that you're really interested in. I would love to learn more about it. And to that, I say cheers.